Hi everyone, so welcome to one more session of Fantastic 5 MCQs for upcoming NEET PG or FMG exams. Myself, Dr. Bharat. So first we'll take up the MCQ. Match the drug and antidotes combination. So it is an important question. Every year the question comes from this. Option 1. Heparin. What is the antidote of heparin? Can you guess? Yes, you are right. Protamine. Sulfate. Second, we have ethylene glycol or methanol the antidote name is fomipizole so fomipizole is inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase now we have a drug called flumazenil don't confuse this with fomipizole flumazenil is for benzodiazepine overdose z drug overdose or beta carbolin overdose third hydrofluoric acid you may not be knowing that let us keep it Fourth, valproate. So when we give valproate, it increases ammonia, ammonia levels. That is called valproate-induced hyperammonemia. The antidote is levocarnitine. So even if you don't know what is hydrofluoric acid, then your answer will be definitely uh, calcium gluconate. Now what is hydrofluoric acid? Hydrofluoric acid is used in glass industries and it is an acid. It can cause burns and it can cause hypercalcemia. So the antidote what we give is calcium gluconate. I'll just show you the image. This is the hydrofluoric acid. You can see here hydrofluoric acid antidote gel. What is the content of that? It contains calcium gluconate. Even the burns which are caused by this hydrofluoric acid, the antidote is this gel, calcium gluconate gel. And that's why this question has been tested. So please remember Antidotes is a must and please read that for your exams. Coming to the second MCQ, mechanism of anti-migraine drug causing angina-like symptom is Release nitric oxide? No. Inactivates calcium channel? No. 5-HT antagonism? No. They are 5-HT agonist. What are these drugs? Let me write a name. Sumatriptan. So Sumatriptans, they belong to 5ST, 1B, 1D agonist. So because of this agonism, they can cause vasoconstriction, they decrease CGRP, they decrease nausea and vomiting. So because of these three advantages, sumatriptan is the drug of choice for acute attack of migraine. So triptans are the drug of choice for acute attack of migraine. Now compared to ergots, ergots also cause vasoconstriction, but they don't decrease EGRP, they don't decrease nausea vomiting. Now both ergots and triptans should not be given together. There should be a gap of 24 hours. There should be gap. And both are contraindicated if the patient is having ischemic heart disease because they cause vasoconstriction and worsen it. And they are contraindicated in uncontrolled hypertension patient because the vasoconstriction will worsen the hypertension so some of the point you need to learn from this which are 5st one b one d agonist they are triptans drug of choice for acute attack of migraine 5st one f agonist recently approved is las meditan this is a drug which is used in acute attack of migraine but you can use it in ischemic heart disease patient because it will not cause vasoconstriction it only decreases CGRP. So the advantage is if a patient having ischemic heart disease and attack of migraine then what I can prefer is less mediatan. Recently we have come up with CGRP antagonist they are all monoclonal antibodies erenumab galcanizumab, premanizumab, eptinizumab. You can see most of the names end with nezumab. One thing of remembering it. So these are CGRP antagonist. And please understand a mnemonic every. So array every girl can, every girl can free a man. Free a man from ego. So remember from ego. Every girl can free a man from ego. So, erenumab, 
galcanism free manism and eptinism so these are all for preventive treatment of migraine not for attack preventive treatment of migraine coming to another cgrp antagonist these are all given oral these are ending with g point ubra g point then zave g point remember the name zave g point is given as nasal spray that means it will work quickly so remember these g points are for attack of migraine rime g point is for both attack and for prophylaxis ato g point is only for prophylaxis so this is a update of g points but all the maps are for preventive treatment and they are not given orally because they are monoclonal antibody so this is the update about new drugs for migraine moving on to the next question third which of the following statements are true let us see morphine used in pulmonary edema yes it's a true statement so morphine can be used in left ventricular failure or pulmonary edema mi it can be used in cancer pain that is morphine an opiate correct pethidine used in biliary colic true why pethidine is used in biliary colic because pethidine has anticholinergic property that means anti spasmodic so it can be used in biliary colic please remember contraindication of morphine is frequently tested it is not used i am telling you about morphine contraindicated in head injury it will worsen biliary colic so it is not given it is contraindicated in biliary colic and it is not used in bronchial asthma so these are the contraindications of morphine please remember that and the another question i want to tell you can we use nitrates in biliary colic can you use nitrate in biliary colic you answer me yes or no in the comment section tell me now coming to another thing indomethacin can be used in treatment of headache true statement true statement remember indomethacin is an nsaid analgesic can be used in headache but indomethacin is not so frequently used in practice because because the most common adverse effect what we see is severe frontal headache so it can be seen in some people but can it be used in headache yes obviously but it can cause headache and also it can cause some psychiatric problems so that's why this is not popular but it is tested frequently in the exam aspirin used in peptic ulcer disease obviously it's a false statement aspirin being an aside a decrease prostaglandin and decreasing prostaglandin will cause gastritis and lead to ulcer so i we don't give it so they have asked which statements are true all these three are true statement they should ask which are false then the answer would have been d so that is about third question we understood so many concept from this moving on to the fourth question which of the following fluoroquinolone has maximum oral viability it's a fact based question even if you don't know no problem the answer is levofloxacin levofloxacin and ofloxacin they have maximum oral viability approximately 99 to 100% oral viability is seen i'm not telling 100% approximately only iv has 100% viability similarly there is a drug called linezolid so if we give orally it also has approximately 100% oral viability so these are tested frequently but in this mcq what should i learn i should be learning the adverse effect of fluoroquinolones ecg remember they cause qt prolongation qt prolongation correct tendon they can cause tendinitis and tendon rupture so that is particularly a problem in elderly cartilage they can cause damage that's why it should not be given in pregnant women and careful in children cns high dose can lead to seizures skin it can lead to allergy and a dreaded complication called steven john syndrome so these are tested frequently 
and also fluoroquinones mechanism is tested it inhibit dna virus particularly in gram negative bacteria and inhibits dna topoisomerase 4 in gram positive bacteria so this is about fluoroquinolones now tell me which fluoroquinolones are useful in mdr tb tell me two fluoroquinolones useful in mdr tb please answer that then the next question is a patient was prescribed a high dose penicillin along with gentamicin for his symptoms which of the following statement is true tdm must be done for penicillin no need of tdm tdm stands for therapeutic drug monitoring because penicillin has wide therapeutic index tdm must be done for gentamicin true because it is toxic drug it can cause ototoxicity nephrotoxicity and a neuromuscular blockade it should be done it should be done for both penicillin gentamicin no tdm need not be done no at least for amylcoside we have to do therapeutic drug monitoring because of toxicity now what are the drugs where we require therapeutic drug monitoring a list look at tdm concentration is a mnemonic l for lithium a for amino glycoside just now i told you and anti-epileptics like uh, your valproate phenytoin like that e for tricyclic antidepressants and theophylin theophylin belongs to methylxanthines d for our digoxin m for our anti-cancer drug methotrexate c for calcium inhibitors like cyclosporin tacrolimus so these are the drugs which require therapeutic drug monitoring so with that we are ending this fantastic five mcqs hope you found that useful any feedback you can give in the comment section so this is for your revisions thank you all take care